This is how I got into, this is embarrassing. This is how I got into to ransomware. I used to, I did. I, I used to, to, to put my nose up to ransomware because, you know, it was uh, up until 2015, uh, the, the late 2015, prior to that, all ransomware was, uh, all of it, it was spray and pray, meaning mass mailing lists for spam with some, you know, automated ransomware binary that encrypts your one computer. And most of the time that encryption, if, if you knew what you were doing, could even be broke. I think it was May 12th, 2017. Um, my boss came to me and said, there's something going on. There's a big ransomware attack. I need you to look at it. And he walked away. That was Eric Shen, who I was talking about earlier at Symantec. And I looked over. Um, there was another the analyst that I worked with, a guy named Sylvester Segura. Uh, he was new um, to the team. And I was training him at the time. And uh, I looked at him and I'm like, dude, why are we looking at ransomware? Like, I'm like, there's automation that can handle this. Like, why are we the ones looking at it? And my boss heard me and he kind of gave me this look. That ended up being WannaCry. Oh, wow. <laughs> I bought them up putting your foot in your mouth, like the biggest attack the world has seen. And I was putting my nose up to it. You can't let yourself get to a certain point where you think, and I'm not saying I thought it was too good for, but you think something is not worth looking at, not worth investigating, or ah, this is just too low level. You have to, you have to understand that, you know, bad guys change, TTPs change, and sometimes they're going to reinvent the wheel. And that's what they did with ransomware. And, you know, that was 2017, but the signs were there in 2015. It was the, they were in Iran, but the same, same guys were the first group that created this enterprise ransomware model where they would shut down an entire organization. And it just grew from there. But my, my point is, is that, you know, because it wasn't prevalent and it wasn't what I was looking at every day, when that big attack happened, it I would have looked the other way if my boss didn't say to look at this. And, you know, shame on me. But that that's a great story, though, why you can't do that. My job's really evolved. And, uh, you know, I do so much ransomware. I really want to get more espionage. So es espionage bad guys, I need you to do more because I'm <laughs> doing way too much <laughs> ransomware these days. <laughs> Uh, no, I love what I do. So I get really, when I get in, in an interesting, creative, bad guy, I get really excited. And, and sometimes people, often people misplace that. All right, do you, are you like rooting for them? And I'm like, no, but this is so cool. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. Going back to Semantic, we did a study of uh, five of the big ransomware groups. And we looked at um, from when the first time that they got on uh, a network, when they when they first got initial access to when they actually executed their ransomware payload. And we were finding that it went from three days to three weeks. And the average was about seven to 10 days. But my point being is, I don't think most people realize that there are, there's some, it's, there, there's some of the best hackers in the world, but they're literally on your network for that long. You have that much time to catch them. And, and my team, we did. We caught them all the time. Garmin ended up getting hit because they weren't one of our customers. And I don't work for Semantic anymore, so it's not a sales pitch. But there was 30 other customers and there was like 27 of them were US companies and it was Evil Corp and they were in their networks and they were doing this massive campaign and they were staging and turning off the security controls and enumerating and they were literally placing the ransomware payloads on all their key servers. Um, again, it was... 30 companies and most of them fortune 500 and we were able to stop that and the one a month later that hey, hit the news was garmin unfortunately um we didn't have anything to do with that one but unfortunately they got hit and it cost them 10 million dollars 10 million dollars and that was the, the first time we saw ransom go from hundreds of thousands to millions but the point in the story is like I mean, it used to be nation state was your worst threat. It's I'd arguably say that that's not the case anymore. Well, that's that would be your second worst threat because ransomware, not only they're encrypting your data now, they're stealing it. And now they're even doing third extortion where they're doing a denial of service on your on your infrastructure. So even if you do have some public facing infrastructure up, they're making sure your company, uh, your customers can access it. So. When people say don't pay a ransom anymore, I, I'm like, you do what you got to do to keep your company alive. I mean, it's just insane, you know, uh, what it costs to rebuild an infrastructure. Um, I think the the one that's been documented where uh, I can't think of their name. It's a big it was, it was a big company and it was the Maze ransomware uh, group, also known as Twisted Spider, who did this. But they they demanded a, it was a uh, like a Fortune 20 company and they demanded uh 14, 10 or $14 million ransom. And they decided not to pay it. And they decided to rebuild on their own. 
Um, a year later, a journalist contacted them and they were open and talked to him about it. And the 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 cost that, that it what they incurred to rebuild was seventy million dollars. OK, do you think if they could go back and pay that whatever, 10 or 14 million dollars they would have? I, I guarantee you that that they would. And then, you know, there's like Travel X. They got hit with with ransomware. They handled it incorrectly. They tried to hide it under the rug. They tried to minimize it. They didn't realize the advanced threat that it actually was. They should have. My book wasn't out, but if it was, they should have read it. And uh, they got hit. They, they went out of business or. Well, they they. They sold off their business, but yeah, they, the company itself doesn't exist anymore because of that. I, I'm going to use the very public version, but there's a lot more examples that are not public where like North Korea hit hit Sony and just decimated them. You know, that happens a lot more than you think. It's just that it's not in the act of revenge. It's in the act of stealing their intellect, intellectual property. And then communications, that's another big one. We, we've seen a great example, uh, also Russian organized crime. This was like in 2014. So so this was really early for this type of an attack. They came into an organization, again, using tools and resources and tactics they read from espionage store, uh, uh, reports that were out there. They got into this, this financial-based company that was publicly traded, and all they stole were the communications, communications between key leaders, decision makers. Um, they took it all. They read it. They understood. They knew the thing, the private information where the stock was going, and they leveraged that to play the stock market and short the stock, and they ended up making wow. a lot of money, and they influenced this, this company's value, and they got rich. So that is that theft? It's illegal. It's You're still stealing something, and you're hurting all the people that put money into it. But it was, again, it was I'm not patting them on the back, but it was a brilliant idea that we as defenders, if we'd been watching people's emails that, you know, being stolen like that data, if we'd been looking at that a little bit harder, you know, we would have realized something is wrong, but you don't because you're thinking of bad guys. They're not looking at care about what our emails are. They're caring about what our intellectual property is or what our research is or what we're doing on this contract. You know, so you got to think out of the box, like I said, it's always changing.